Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, man. Today on Project E, I'm gonna show you a pattern that works late in the summer and early in the fall when things get tough. From the top of the You know, today's power stop breakdown is going to be really simple for my approach. It's going to be three baits. It's going to be a bait that I can flip in there, let it go to the bottom, you know, bring it out. It's going to be a buzz bait, a bait I can keep on top of the water, and then a bait that's just beneath the surface, either a wake bait or a square bill crank bait. For the buzz bait that I'm going to throw, you know, it's just going to be something like this, a half ounce, something with the buzzing speed toad from Berkeley. 50 pound braid, a 7-1 medium heavy rod, a high speed reel, something I can reel in very quickly. That high speed's important because I am gonna cover a ton of water today and reeling that thing really, really fast. Another bait that's gonna be important for this type of pattern is just a square bill crankbait. You know, I've got really dirty water. You know, this is something that's really bright that it'll, you know, move a lot of water. This is just a square bull 5.5. I've got it on a seven foot medium heavy rod and again, another high speed reel. And I've got this on 17 pound fluorocarbon. I don't, I'm not trying to get it deep. I just, I wanna keep it up, I wanna keep it moving. I want some strong line. And then lastly, you know, something that I, I just tied on just to flip into something. If, if I feel like I needed to follow up, you know, on, on, a, on a special spot or sometimes when you run across a shallow brush pile, you can't get one of these baits through there effectively and you've got to have a flipping bait. So I just got a, you know, Berkeley Maxent Creature Hog right there, just a real simple bait, black, blue flake. Got that set up on a 7.6 heavy action rod, 25 pound fluorocarbon, and again, another high speed platinum Bass Pro reel. Golly, that was awesome. That was awesome. Man, I had a suspicion they'd be in the backs of these pockets. It's just, it's that time of the year. I know the water temperature hadn't cooled off yet, but they are starting to make their move towards the back, guys. I don't know if they make their move or if it's just, this is where some oxygen is. I got wind blowing in. I got shad back here. Uh, you know, maybe it's just time that these fish become active all of a sudden. You know, the conditions that we got today, you know, the water temperature's in the, you know, mid to upper 80s, 85, 86, 87 degrees, it's warm. The water's pretty dingy, you know, just this lake in general, late in the summer, early in the fall, things dingy up, you know, a lot of the places where I'm from, uh, wind does it, algae does it, you know, and then a turnover will do it also. This was up there shallow. Awesome. Awesome. Man, he's got all the hooks in it. Come here, buddy. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, he's up there eating shad. He's pooping all over the place. Sweet. A big reason I think these fish are that shallow is I think it's got a lot to do with the oxygen. You know, the wind generating um, oxygen at the end of the summer. Things are warm. Thermocline breaks up, you know, uh, the lakes start to turn over. That's really the best oxygen. I've had some, some biologists tell me that in the past and just really stuck in my brain that, you know, those fish really compress to that upper water column. And I think that's why a shallow pattern like this can excel under these conditions. You know, great bait in the fall is a buzz bait, but a, a couple things just to keep in mind when you're throwing it. Always engage your reel almost as the instant or before it hits the water and then start reeling really fast to get that buzz bait right on top. Uh, and what I mean by that is when I throw that out there, I've stopped it and engaged it right before it hits the water and then the instant it hits the water, I'm already on top, up and going. It just helps with strikes, helps you from getting snagged. You know, so many of those bites is, is the instant that bait hits the water, it's just that reaction of that fish, you know, hearing that splash and that sound. And by having it on top of the water, it's already doing its job, you know, hopefully catching that fish. So remember to stop it before it ever gets to the water and reel it really quick, the first two, three handles, just so it's right there on top of the water and you can make the most of every cast. There's one. 
just like that. Fish is shallow. I mean shallow, shallow, shallow. He ate it too, didn't he? Thanks, bud. I think this pattern starts as the days get shorter. You know, a, a lot of people think maybe that, that it's a water temperature driven thing, it's a cool weather driven thing. I think it's more as those days get shorter, uh, you know, as that oxygen level compresses, that's when this pattern starts. I think it starts a lot quicker, a lot sooner than most people realize. You know, the end of August, 1st of September here in Oklahoma, it's a pattern that I, I will always go to. And it'll last all the way through September, October, really into November until it just gets way too cold. It's something you can do for the next three months, just running shallow wood, shallow cover, you know, covering a lot of water. Oh, that is so much fun. That is just so much fun getting to bite that buzz bait. Sunny day. Golly, he ate it too. He ate it. Not a giant, but we're catching some. Prime example right there, you know, of, of one of those things that I think we can do in the fall you know, to put some more fish in the boat is make multiple, multiple, multiple casts. I think back to a uh, classic that George Cochran won uh, in the back of these flats on Lay Lake, and, and man, he was making 10 to 12 casts down every log. Just keep casting, keep casting. Well, that's, you do that this time of the year. You know, I'd made six or seven casts across it, and I'm pulling away, make one more, and bam, I get a bite. Not a big one, but it, I mean, why didn't he bite the first four or five times? I think they're so conditioned you know, to people making one or two casts, you know, we fish for them all summer. You know, when somebody stops and fishes six or seven or 10 casts, I, th I think they finally say, man, I can't take it no more. Get out of my house and, the and they eat it out of aggression. You know, so many times when, when somebody pulls up and they have a little piece of brush like that, they're gonna cast really close to it with a crankbait. And, and I would cast close to it with a buzz bait, something that's not gonna get snagged. But when I'm gonna pick my crankbait up, I'm gonna throw five, six, seven feet to the left of each side. I want to try to hit the outsides of it first so I don't get it snagged. You know, so many times that, that cast right across the middle, yeah, you'll, you can get a bite, but you also are running the risk of snagging and then ruining it all together. So work your way in. Start out, you know, start out four or five feet, make another cast a little bit closer, uh, and then make the cast right in the heart of it. I just, I don't ever want to make the first cast on something that I really feel like there's a fish on right in the heart, because you might get snagged. And a lot of times also it's running this way, so the big piece might be out here. You know, right there's a prime example. We talk all the time on Project E, this time of year, everything being up. You know, the shad all across this whole lake are up at the surface. It's kind of it's kind of backwards to what you would think. You know, the water's still really warm, but that goes to show the best oxygen is all right near the surface. And for me in the past, you know, I didn't really understand all that, you know, and I was still trying to fish on the bottom, fish deeper, when I just don't think there's as, as much oxygen down there. Thus, you know, you see all the shad up top, you know, and the bites that we're getting are up towards the surface. A couple key takeaways when you're running this pattern, you know, just think about covering water. Think about hitting the most high percentage spots that you can. You know, you know, shallow brush on points, uh, any shallow brush, just run it as quickly and as fast as you can. You know, for me, this time of the year, it's a productive pattern when those are, are on flats, you know, obscure places. Uh, and it's not, it'll be something that, that I can run all day long, no matter how sunny or cloudy it is but it is a pattern that shines you know i'm going to make the cast i need to make on a piece of cover i'm not afraid to pull that trolling motor run 100 yards put it back down make the cast i need to make pull the trolling motor run 200 yards a mile whatever it is when i run this pattern i'm running it hard and i'm running it quick because i feel like at the end of the day the more casts that i can make on the most you know on all the high spots all the most productive pieces of brush, that many more opportunities to put some fish in the boat. So 
if, if I was to say I might do something differently than maybe a, a, a guy that hasn't ever done this, I am going to cover it and I'm going to cover it quickly. Man. I tell you, one thing is in common with them today. They're few and far between but I'm going really fast, so it seems like I'm catching a lot of fish. We're just having to cover a lot of water, you know, to stand on that trolling motor, throw that buzz bait. It's just a high percentage bait this time of year because you can cover so much water. And I think that's what, you know, you have to do when the fish are inactive as they are with this warmer water. Cover water, cover water, cover water. Stump right there underneath the water that fish came off of. Hey guys, that's my day, man. I covered a ton of water in a short amount of time, you know, this morning. I've got to go home. I got to get this boat packed up, hooked up to that Toyota, headed north to the next Bass Pro Tour event up on St. Clair. It's going to be an awesome event. I cannot wait to get up there. We'll be doing a video on that event. Also, you guys will be looking for it in the future, but uh, I appreciate you guys following along. We'll see you next week right here on Project E.